I'm your host with the most local 23. You're joining me for chapter 15, Light of the Night. Members of Lorelei's staff carry trunks of luggage across your Duchy's branch. Hannah's luggage. Lorelei, just slow down. There must be a way to work this out. If Hannah wants to remain a recognized member of the Lee family, she'll return home at once. But Valtoria is my home. This duchy is not your home, child. Your home is in Shanghai. Lady Riley has graciously offered me a place here. Do you know who else has been offered a place here? Our staff. That is no arrangement for someone of your station. As Duchess of Valtoria... Mara, I command you to seize her. No, 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 no. We don't want a diplomatic incident. I asked we talk this over. Uh, we've waited too long for, on the hope that our words could produce the results we desire. Now the time has passed and action is required. You ain't extended shit to me. Trust me, I'm protecting Hannah, and doing so the best way I can. Hannah's a great wo a grown woman. She can take care of herself. I've seen it. You don't know her as well as I do, and a sweet, delicate flower, that the kind that remains careful, tended to, and make a bloom to its best advantage. Left here with the weeds, she'd wither. Yep, cutting off Hannah won't bring her back to you. I know Hannah. If you think taking her clothes is the best way to get through to her, then maybe not as well as you should. There's no need to escalate things further. We've said all we came to say. Oh, I'm glad this is one-sided. One of Lower Lies' attendants passes with an open trunk of clothes. Hannah's eyes lock onto an embroidered black dress laid across the top. That one, too. You know that what that dress means to me. I can only hope it means enough for you to finally come to your senses. Otherwise... Lorelai snaps the trunk shut. Mother! You've lost your right to call me that. Oh, you're a... How about this? I got a word for you. It starts with B. Another attendant lifts the trunk and carries it down the driveway. Further on, you see members of the press begin to arrive for the festival. If you'd like it back, find me in the study to make your arrangements for your travel home. Lorelai turns and walks into the estate. You best get the shit out of my estate. I made that dress. She had no right to take it. I know you sewed it yourself. But it sounds like there might be more to the story. I sewed it with my grandmother the summer before she died, from a pattern she used when she was my age. I still remember the way she smiled when she saw me wearing it for the first time, and now it's gone. It's not gone yet. It may as well be, unless I was to find some way to take it back. Even then, I couldn't possibly go against my mother by stealing from her. Is it really stealing from her if you're taking something that belongs already to you? We'd have to dream up some form of distraction, work our way past the staff, and find the right trunk. Oh, Riley, do you think we could really pull it off? <laughs> I'm mad. Really, Pixelberry? Stay out of it. It's fun to fantasize, but I don't think we should risk making things worse with your mom. You're right. I still can't believe she would cut me off to begin with. I feel like a child weeping over lost toys. You'd have to be heartless not to be affected by something like this. Your mother knows that. But what she doesn't seem to know is that it takes... It's going to take more than a few empty hangers to break Hannah Lee. You're right about that as well. Turns out I'm right about a lot of things. Don't let it go to your head. 
Thank you for that. Besides, it isn't as though she's tossing my things into the furnace. I'll get them back someday. Exactly. It's just a matter of patience. Do you know what might make me feel better in the meantime? Letting me help you get ready for tonight's Lantern Festival. That's right. We should both get ready. The festival's starting soon. I would have been like, hey, Mom, I was planning on wearing that black dress to this festival. Uh, mind if I borrow it and then you can have it back when I come with you? And then, aha. Uh -huh. You walk in the boutique with Hana when you find Gladys waiting for you. Gladys, what are you doing here? Each year, the most talented dressmakers in Valtoria make custom gowns for the annual Lantern Festival. The best is presented before the Duchess. If she likes it, she traditionally rewards the dressmaker by purchasing the dress, then wearing it to the festival where she'll release her lantern. What a wonderful tradition! I'm told this year's dress represents the lake near your estate where the lanterns float. Cool blue thread work for the water, attenuated by local gemstones for the lanterns. I have to say, I've seen many such dresses presented in my time, but none quite as radiant as what arrived this morning, your race. Gladys takes a dress from the rack and turns to face you, holding a sparkling blue and silver gown that shimmers against the light. It's exquisite! I've never seen so something so delicate and at the same time so striking. The people of your duchy will adore you in it. I just know the press will too. I can't wait to see how it looks on me. It's not bad. Hmm. Again, it's not bad. What do we have? Oh. You had me at black. What? They still haven't fixed that. God damn it. I appreciate the help, but I think I'm going to play it safe tonight. Firstly, for you, you look beautiful no matter what you wear. I agree. Ready to go? Yes, but... And I'll size. I'm just not sure how I can face my parents tonight. I need to say something, do something, to help them understand. But I don't know what's left for me to say to my mother. Then it sounds to me like you should be talking to your father instead. I could try, but I've never convinced him to overturn my mother's wishes before. Well, this isn't over yet. We'll find a way. I hope so, but with the press filming tonight live, and the last thing I want for my family to do is for their troubles to overshadow your festival. I'm. It's going to be a beautiful night, Riley. I intend to enjoy it. You and Hannah make your way to the front of the state where you find the Lantern Festival just beginning. You step outside to the side of friends and acquaintances, mingling happily across the grounds while members of the press gather near the bridge. Then you look up. Suddenly you're struck by the sight of hundreds of glowing lanterns sailing across the sky of your duchy. It's a beautiful festival, by the way. Very beautiful screenshot. Gladys appears beside you, joining you in gazing across the floating lanterns. Welcome to your first Gordonian Lantern Festival, Your Grace. It's amazing. There are so many lanterns in the sky. There's the hopes and dreams of your people. As the Duchess and future Queen, many of them will be for you. I've attended this festival for years, and this is the most I've seen. Your people are excited to have you. So each lantern is someone's wishes? Traditionally, lanterns represent two things. A wish, yes, but often the desire to let something go as well. A few members of the press catch sight of you and immediately raise their cameras in your direction. Live from Valtoria, Duchess Riley has joined the festivities. We are expected to hear her wishes later this evening. Just then, Lorelai steps out from behind you. Oh, God damn it, go away. Good evening, everyone. Lady Val, Lorelai, we weren't told you'd be making an appearance tonight. Your stance on Duchess Riley has um, 
made a success of mystery, a source of mystery, for some time now. Does your presence here mean you've decided to offer her your support? And what about Duchess Riley's wedding? Have you made plans to attend? For now, my husband and I are just here to enjoy the festivities, but... Lorelai fires a knowing look towards you and Hannah, then looks back to the press. We'll have a statement for you by the end of the night. That doesn't do shit for me. I don't care. Lorelai le leans into you, Hannah, speaking too quietly for the microphones. You have until the party ends to make the right decision. I already have. No need to wait. Oh god, I want to say the B word. I really want to. Lorelai turns back to the cameras to grin and wave before moving past you into the party. Duchess Riley. Let's hold off on any further questions until later. The press dissipates into the crowd as your request, eager to capture extra footage of the festival. This is exactly what I was worried about. My problems upstaging your night. Don't worry. We'll figure out a way to resolve this. Anna nods and joins the party as you hear an enthusiastic voice call out to you from the crowd. Riley! Riley, over here! Hey, Penelope. Thanks for coming out tonight. I just adore paper lanterns, don't you? Knowing that each one represents someone's deepest desires, it makes me feel all fuzzy inside. Like a poodle. Yeah, I've never seen anything like, quite like it. Thank you again for convincing me to come back, to think I, I may have missed something like this. Liam and I are really glad to have you here. Oh, I think I can see more floating down the river. As Penelope moves across the bridge, you find some of your friends having a conversation behind you. Hey guys, enjoying the festival? Actually, I am. It's nothing compared to the parties I host in Lycos, but then again, few things are. For once, I agree. This little soiree isn't half the disaster I feared it may be. Oh, thank God for the vote of confidence, guys. The town star, you two. Riley, your f festival is magnifique. Gara leans around you and waves her hand. Father, come say hello to our host. A key approaches from the nearby to join your group and offers you a respectful non. Good evening, Your Grace. What a lovely night for this year's Lantern Festival. It's perfect. I see you both have your lanterns ready to go. I'm using mine to leave any remaining doubts of staying at court behind me. But more importantly, using my wish for speed as I learn Icelandic. So, there is a language you don't know yet. How about you, Hakeem? Tonight I'll be wishing for a speedy resolution to a minor diplomatic hiccup with one of my Swedish counterparts. Recently I had a meeting with him, but my Swedish greeting had a Danish accent. Father, it's not like you to make such a silly mistake. Well, at least I'm not the only one here trying to cure his professional troubles. Rad Rasad is... Wishing so hard for a contract with Portera Group that I think he's gone with find a second lantern to double his chances. You guys are all business. Eh, no, they're lucky to have you. It's nice to have one's work appreciated. Your Grace, thank you. We're both very keen to hear what your wishes are during the press event later. Just then you turn to find Zingha walking toward the river alone. Hakeem notices, and you staring in the distance behind him. That is Riley. Is something wrong? I think I just had an idea. Please excuse me. You rush to catch up with Set. I, I, I believe I'm pronouncing his name correctly, Zinghai. Mr. Lee, can we talk? That is Riley. I assume this is about my daughter. My wife will be back without drinks in just a moment. In their culture... Women make decisions that can affect... Women could make a decisions back in the day that could affect wars. Actually, I wanted to speak with you alone. You have to talk to Lorelai out of disowning Hannah. 
I know you're a reasonable person, so please understand Lorelai simply wants what's best for her. Yes. Her, keyword. I do too. You're a woman of the world. Your background may not have prepared you for court, but it did equip you with a life or independence. Hannah is precise opposite. Lorelai's actions may appear harsh, but I assure you she feels nothing but love and concern for our daughter. If that's true, then... Someone should tell her this isn't how love works. Love is trusting and respectful. Doesn't it go to both ways? Shouldn't my daughter trust and respect her parents' judgment? Just then Lorelai appears beside, saying hi, holding two glasses of wine. Dear, I was just explaining some of the reasons behind your concerns. Our concerns. Yes, I heard. Duchess Riley, I know you don't think I care about Hannah's happiness, but if there were true, I wouldn't be wasting time on this discussion. You must understand wealth, nobility. It isn't just mansions and parties, it's about the responsibility to your past and your future. Who doesn't have a desire to act impulsively, selfishly, or those who wish to rise aren't allowed to? We must live by higher standards that require sacrifices. Well, if that's the case, I'm the king of the world right now. Oh, <laughs> that reasoning was shit. Maybe it doesn't have to be either or. Can Hannah fulfill her dreams and help the family? Dreams. <laughs> Hannah needs to think practically now, or else she'll reach the end of her marriageable years and find herself an old spinster. I know that Hannah had failed prospects in the past, but there's still time. I know I can still make a favorable match for her. You still want to set Hannah up? Of course, with someone who can take care of her and add to our family's standing. I could cast a stone and find a suitable candidate here. Rise, fallen, Rashad, and Neville. Oh my god, stop it! Either of those men. For instance, Neville will inherit it as an earl. Marrying him would eventually elevate Hannah to a countess. Even Rashad would be suitable. Their husband fights every day to sell textiles to the global market. With Rashad's international contacts, Zinghai's company would double in size. Instead, Zinghai's best hope for making this happen is to wish for it on a silly paper lantern. It's not a silly paper lantern. Lorelai turns and walks away. Zinghai looks down briefly at the lantern in his hand, then follows her back into the festival. A moment later, Hannah appears in their place, her head held low. Hannah, how much did you hear? Probably all of it. Everything. Thank you for trying to fix things, Riley, but it seems no one can get through to them. Mm. Mm. They still can be convinced. Yes, by marrying me... By me marrying someone by, like Rashad. My parents see marriage as the only thing I have to offer. But I'm sure I could get Rashad's help by giving him something else. If only I knew what that was. I don't even know what he wants. Try asking, but I do. Try and land a client. Portera Group. The Portera Group? Why does that name sound familiar? Well, it's not to be confused with the Portera earrings that the Saiyans wear and the cause. <laughs> Someone watched Dragon Ball Z at, at Pixelberry. I remember now. Riley, we have to find Rashad. I know how to fix this. Anna takes your hand and you travel with her through the crowd until you spot Rashad entering your estate. Rashad, can we talk? I was just about to make a call, but I can wait. What can I help you with? Actually, I was hoping to help you with something. Your lantern wish. Ah, uh, you know about that? You want the Portera Group as a client, and I happen to know the Founder's son. We met at a gala some time ago. After an evening spent discussing shopping, he told me to call if I ever needed anything. 
Rashad, if you had a connection like that, I'd say your chances to make a deal are going to go up. Way up. Uh, in return for this help? Work with my father. Help him expand his company into Europe. I like what Zinghai's doing, but and that's a big commitment, especially in exchange for a simple introduction. Hmm. He's business-minded. I wonder if rival firms... Are you threatening me, Duchess Riley? Of course not. I'm only stating something you already know. You probably aren't the only one hoping to sign the Portera Group, but you are the only one with this opportunity for now. Hmm. You make a convincing point. A Zinghai's business may be a good idea for my firm on its own. Does that mean we have a deal? Provided you can follow through, yes. It's a deal. Booyah! Rashad shakes Hannah's hand enthusiastically, then excuses him to make a call. Hannah, that was amazing. Do you think it's enough to convince my parents to not cut me off? Well, let's hope. Either you... Either way, you helped your family. Even if your mom wasn't trying to take all the stuff away from you, you just gave your family a business, business, a new opportunity. I did, didn't I? If you'd like me to pat you on your head, I will, I begrudgingly do it, okay? But she seems like a puppy sometimes, man, I tell you. A little while later, you walk back outside with Hannah, where you're immediately met with members of the press gathering at the entrance to your estate. Your Grace, your Grace, over here! I think that's my cue. Whatever happens to me, I just hope my mother doesn't say something in front of the cameras to hurt your standing. No matter what happens next, you did a good job tonight. You cross the bridge and face the press, microphones, and cameras. Your closest friends gather beside you. Duchess Riley, let's cut right to the point. You revealed the traitor Anton Severus, formerly of your grace's own inner circle. Hey, Justin was never part of the inner circle. He was... Middle circle at best. Vindy's more capable of speaking for herself. As I was saying, Anton is on the loose. Maybe even watching tonight's broadcast. Cordonia wants to know if you could say one thing to Anton, what would it be? Do the right thing and turn yourself in. I can't promise mercy, but I do know things will be better for him and Cordonia if he does the right thing. Your Grace, tonight we'll hear your first wishes as the Duchess of Valtoria, a moment your people have, no doubt, been looking forward to. Right, my lantern. Just then, Liam steps forward with a beautiful paper lantern in hand. Looking for this? Yes, thank you. <laughs> you turn to face the camera. People of Valtoria, it is my great honor to be here with you tonight. These have been trying times, but tonight's festival represents a light that those who wish to harm us can never extinguish. Raise your lantern to the crown. With this lantern, I leave behind minimum wage waitress jobs. <laughs> God damn it. Naivete. Fear. People like Anton want us to be afraid. The best thing we can do... I can do is refuse. It's time to stand tall. Hear, hear. A fine sentiment. And your wish? I wish for... a Cordonia United. No matter where we begin, and no matter which region we call home, we're all Cordonians. It is my deepest desire to see us all stand together as one. The growl cheers at your response. Well said, Your Grace. The crowd quiets as you raise your arms and release your lantern to the wind. I've always wanted to do this. I've always wanted to do a lantern release ceremony. Um, but welcome to America. They don't they don't really have one here. Um, and also I don't know how to like make a lantern. So uh, it's just yeah. Thank you, Duchess Riley. That was a a moment to remember. Uh, can Tren get a photo of the future king and queen together? Before we wrap, I'd like to tie a national angle to tonight's event. 
Of course, it would be my honor. Liam wraps an arm around your waist and waves as the camera flashes in front of you. I've always found the Lantern Festival to be one of my favorite local traditions. How fitting that you are one to inherit it. I just hope I've done it justice. That and more. Thanks! These photos look great! Can I see a couple? Just then, you're joined by... On the Stairs by Lorelai. I believe I promised the press a statement. Mother, wait! There's something I need to tell you! Anna tries to step forward, but is crowded out of the gathering. Lady Lorelai, we've heard conflicting reports about your relationship to Duchess Riley. Is it true that your house will have nothing to do with the wedding? Absolutely not true. My husband and I offer our full support to Duchess Riley and the Crown, and look forward to attending the wedding of Cordonia's future queen. And we look forward to having them. I guess. I'm sure the people of Cordonia are pleased to hear it. With that, the press packs away their equipment and clears their way for Hannah to join you and your mother. Mother, father, you declared your support for Riley? Your mother and I had a very interesting discussion with Rashad, and we wanted to thank you. And to apologize. Whatever you said to Rashad accomplished something in minutes that I had managed, hadn't managed in years. We were wrong to think you couldn't thrive without our oversight. Wow, folks. It's literally turned just like that, right? Okay. Thank you, Father. After seeing what we saw tonight, it seems that Cordonian Court may have a good influence on you after all. I should have had more faith in you. Really? And in the Duchess as well. I'm sorry if I was rude before now. If you were rude. Oh, uh, no. Hold on. Max Waller's my boxing gloves. You know what? Hannah deserves an apology more than I do. You're right. Hannah, if it wasn't clear before, I apologize to you. Thank you for saying that. It means a lot to me. So, does this mean you'll stop trying to make me come home? Because I told you both, this is where I want to be. What it means is that I appear to have misjudged you. And things that... And need to... I got confused. Shut up. I skipped along. Let's try this again. I appear to misjudge things and need to think of the future. In the meantime, I'll instruct my staff to return your things. See Hannah straighten up slightly. That's not what I want. Hannah. I was never as worried about losing my clothes as I was about losing my family. Despite everything, I love you both. I need to know that you can respect my decisions and still be a part of my life. I can do that. We love you, too, Hannah. Hannah reaches for her parents and pulls them into a tight embrace. After Lorelai smiles and walks off towards the water. You know, Hannah, my wish tonight was not going to be for my business. It was for you to discover what it makes takes to make you happy. I see now that this wish was unnecessary. He smiles and hands Hannah his lantern before leaving to join his wife. Hey, did I just see what I think I saw? This means you're staying, right? I'm staying. Woohoo! <laughs> He's like the Homer Simpson of our group. Our dance rivalry continues, or begins. Which is it again? Good one on you, Hannah, for standing up for yourself. Whatever you ladies did seems to have worked a miracle. On 34th Street, it was all Hannah. You notice everyone in the group holding unlit lanterns. So, looks like no one else has made their wishes yet. My parents finally treated me like an adult. It feels like my wish arrived early. I'm jealous. With the important stuff out of the way, you're safe wishing for something amazing and doable, like ice cream. After today, ice cream sounds perfect. How about you, Maxwell? Have you chosen it? I know I'm going to wish for Barty to inherit the Belmont dance genes, 
but I'm still trying to figure out what to let go. I've got a few suggestions. Hey, now, I think you've got a lantern of your own. How about you? Tell us your wish. I think I'd rather keep that to myself. Ooh, let me guess. Whiskey. Or is that too obvious? I bet it's something rugged, like tools or camping apparatus. <laughs> Perhaps some sort of, of meat-filled food. Come on, Drake. Don't leave us hanging. Fine. I wish to be left in peace. How about that? Liam catches your attention and pulls you a few paces away from the group. You notice he's still holding a lantern in his hands. I'm sure it's going to be a diamond choice. Would you like to light this with me? You know, Riley, being here with you in my new home, or our new home, under the stars and sea of lanterns, I can't think of a single thing to wish for. I can help you if you like. I would like that, especially if it involves going somewhere a bit more private. All for the low cost of 30 diamonds. I actually know the perfect place. I could go to the balcony off my bedroom. I bet the view looks spectacular right now. Amazing and secluded. It sounds ideal. And it's 16. Stay on the shore. <laughs> as much as I'd love to, I should probably stay here. I'm not sure about etiquette of sneaking away during my own duchy warming party. I believe, according to Menard's Revised Guide to Condonian Parties, Propriety, the general rule is don't. Though, so, if everything is so lovely that you can't think of a more way to improve it, maybe there's your answer. Wish for things to stay just like they are tonight. That sounds absolutely perfect. Thank you, Riley. After your friends release their lanterns, you approach Gladys, who you find standing by the door with a lantern of her own. So, how did tonight's festival stack up to the past ones? Honestly, Your Grace, the others couldn't hold a candle to tonight. Pun minorly intended. Now, if you don't mind releasing me from my duties for just a few moments, I have my own wishes to make. Consider yourself released. Soon the last lanterns are released to the sky, and your festival begins to wind down. As guests begin to leave, you suddenly see Maxwell dash towards you across the bridge. Riley, there you are! Is something wrong? Please tell me you didn't break anything. I was on my least destructive behavior tonight. You're welcome. Phew. It's about our plans. I finalized them this morning. Okay. We're throwing you a bachelor party in Vegas. Oh god, we're all going to hell now. What does Maxwell have in store for your bachelorette party in Vegas? Find out in the next chapter. Alright, so with that being said, hope you all did enjoy the video. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Let's pull it up! Oh my god! Also, head down to the description below. Links to social media, our Discord, and a few links to support yours truly, as well as our Twitch channel, where you can come tonight. We will be doing a live stream, I promise you. Um, because pretty much we're all done with chapters this week. We're all done with choices for now. As you can clearly tell by the channel, we've been doing some Diamond Editions. Those are up in case you miss them. And we've got some other stuff to be doing as well. Do keep in mind, Veil of Secrets is up next. I'm going to go, though, however. And uh, grab a coffee, because I haven't done that yet. But without further ado, thank you all for watching. And uh, I will catch you all in the next video. Peace.